हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू येट अनदर चैलेंजिंग प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम वन वीक चैलेंज प्रॉब्लम सीरीज राइट सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू डिटरमाइन द मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्शिया ऑफ अ यूनिफॉर्म क्यूब दैट हैज मास एम एंड लेंथ एल about its body diagonal right so just by looking at this question if you want to determine this uh, moment of inertia using integration etc that would uh, probably prove out to be very uh, difficult because visualizing the elements etc are going to be very difficult in this case right and also for the generalized case uh, when actually we go for the higher studies and all uh, after your class 12th and etc you will uh, see that moment of inertia is a tensor quantity which will have its um, nine uh, it will have uh, its nine uh, components in uh, xyz coordinate system that are called ixs ixy and so on so the, these uh, these using all of these concepts and some uh, you know uh, mathematical results some obscure mathematical results uh, you could probably uh, determine the value of moment of inertia uh, about this uh, body diagonal right but i don't want any of that i want uh, this question to be solved uh, using very simple principles some principle of uh, symmetry and also uh, some principle from the units and dimension right so using these two i will be able to solve this question but before i do that i would like you to go through that process first right get a feel of how do we do uh, that particular kind of thing to determine the moment of inertia for some symmetrical bodies right so let me introduce you that particular method first let's say i want to determine the moment of inertia of a uniform rod of mass m length l about this particular axis that is going over h and perpendicular to the rod right so this is not very difficult to determine but i want you to actually feel the uh, concept and understand it in totality so uh, what i'm going to introduce you is another method which will not require you to integrate and all right so if you see that clearly it has one uh, representative uh, dimension that is length l and mass m and you know that you can take any axis you can take any axis whether it is going through the edge whether, uh, whether it is perpendicular to the rod any axis what you are going to get in the result of moment of inertia is mass times l square that is going to be there because uh, the dimensions of the moment of inertia has to be kg length or kg meter square right so mass into length square would be there whatever is the choice of axis but depending upon the choice of axis we will be having some another constant right so all of you know the result about this uh, uh, rod that it is going to be 1 by 3 ml square so we have to somehow prove that k is going to be equal to uh, 1 by 3 right so let's you know first generalize the case that uh, let me say that moment of inertia about this axis is going to be k ml square now what i am going to do is i am going to take another identical rod and just put it like that right so now we have two rods these two rods together can be said to be a single rod of mass 2m length 2l right so if i just take this axis this axis is very identical to this axis for the smaller rod because this axis is also going through the edge of this bigger rod and perpendicular to it so it will actually follow the formula if i want to determine the moment of inertia let's say this i dash uh, of this whole two rods this i dash is going to be equal to k the k value will remain same because the uh, symmetry is same right into instead of mass i will be writing 2m into 2l whole a square right now what so let's take this axis also right and for this bigger rod this axis is passing through the center of mass so let me call the total moment of inertia of these two rods combined about this axis is icm right so icm can be written as twice of moment of inertia of this particular rod because this rod is also the same and this rod is also the same for this particular axis right for both these uh, rods this axis is actually going through the edge and perpendicular to the rod and we already know that this is going to be equal to kml square for one so for two it is going to be equal to 2 kml square right 
So now we can apply the parallel axis theorem between these two axes and we can write I dash as ICM plus total mass of the rods that is 2M into the distance between these axes whole square, right? So this will become that much. Now just substitute all the values. What you will get here is 8 KML is square equal to 2 KML is square plus 2 ML is square. Now ML is square will get cancelled and from here you will get the value of K as 1 by 3, right? So it's a pretty neat method, but it uh, would not seem very, you know, uh, uh, beneficial if you solve this in, uh, if you solve that particular uh, method if you apply that particular method in this case right so let's uh, you know jump to another case right so we are building bit by bit let's take a case of uniform uh, square right a square sheet you can consider this as a square sheet so let's say we have to determine the moment of inertia about this uh, phase diagonal of this square sheet right again i can say that the moment of inertia i is going to be equal to k m l is square k will be something different and if you know the result you know that this is going to be equal to 1 by 12 right so what can i do i will again use the same logic i will uh, take three more such uh, squares and put them such that it will become a square of double side and four times mass so it has 4 m and length is 2 l right so about this particular axis is the moment of inertia of these fours together is I dash and that will be equal to using that particular formula K into 4M into 2L whole square. So right, it will become 16 km L square, right? Now if I write this particular value I dash of all these four, of all these four, let me call this first, this is second, this is third, this is fourth, right? You can see that one and three are identical, two and four are are identical for this particular axis. So I will be just uh, writing I dash as twice the moment of inertia of this uh, first square and that is equal to KML square because the same axis is also the axis that is uh, crossing along the diagonal, right? So that is what we had already stated that, that this uh, moment of inertia is going to be KML square. So KML square for uh, first and for the second, about this axis, it is going to be equal to KML square, right? But we have to determine about this axis, right? So this axis is also passing through the center of mass that is there, right? So you can apply the parallel axis theorem. This distance is going to be how much? Uh, this diagonal is going to be root 2L, so half of that, that is L by root 2, right? So you can write for the second part, for moment of inertia of the second part, ICM, that is going to be KML square plus MD square. This distance is actually D, usually called D, uh, distance, perpendicular distance between the axes. So this will be M times D square, that is L square by 2. Now put the value of I dash, 16 KML square and do all the uh, all the terms right so this will become 2 into 2 4 times k kml square 16 minus 4 will become 12 kml square and that is towards the right it is going to be equal to ml square from here we get the value of k as 1 by 12 right so this is also one example where we can use this uh, question and also one uh, important information i would like to share you probably you all know that if I take any axis that is in the plane of this square and that is going through the center of mass of this uh, square, any such axis, the moment of inertia is going to remain same that is 1 by 12 ml square and this uh, result will also have a sort of bearing or sort of resemblance or sort of you know uh, uh, sort of the similar feeling uh, when we move forward to the case of the cube, right? So probably if you have learned this method, you should pause this video right away and try to do the original question on your own. And if you, you still uh, are not able to get that, then let me jump to the solution of the original question, right? 
So again, the same thing. Let's say we have taken a cube of mass m length l and about the body diagonal, its moment of inertia, we have already assumed k m l square, right? So we have taken four such cubes and put them like that. So we have made a layer of these four cubes and we have made another layer of four such cubes. So let me tell you why did I make these two layers separately. I'm going to slide this layer so that uh, you can uh, actually visualize it better. Uh, I'm going to slide this particular layer over this layer. And when I slide that perfectly uh, one over another, you will uh, imagine that uh, you will be probably very uh, easily imagine that this will become another cube of mass 8m. Why 8m? Because there are 8 such smaller cubes, right? So mass 8m and length 2l. And what I'm going to do uh, with my body diagonal, and that is why I made these two colors different than these uh, blue colors, because I'm going to make a body diagonal starting from this point to this point, right? So let me show you how I'm going to make this cube, right? So I'm going to make a body diagonal starting from this point to this point and these yellow colors, you can see here that these yellow color cubes, uh, the body diagonal of this bigger cube will actually be the body diagonal of these two yellow cubes also. That probably you can imagine, right? So let me make the body diagonal of this bigger cube. Right. And let us also consider one more cube. Which cube I'm talking about? This particular cube. Right. So the one at the back uh, layer and this particular cube. And I will make another body diagonal in this cube that will start from this position and that will end at this position. So I'll make a body diagonal this in this uh, back layered cube. Right. So let's see what is happening here, right? So this was the body diagonal I was talking about. This is at the back layer cube, right? So if you can imagine properly, you can see that these two lines, these two lines are in one particular plane, right? What I have to determine is using the same method, I want to write that the total moment of inertia of all these eight cubes combined is I dash about this axis using the formula is going to be equal to K times mass is eight times into length is two times this much, right? 32 K M L is square. I want to write the same I dash as sum of the moment of inertia about this axis uh, of all these eight ax uh, cubes, right? So the Two cubes uh, are very easy to determine because uh, these two yellow cubes, uh, this actual line is actually the body diagonal for both of them. So I can write two times K M L square, no problem. But the other six are identically situated with respect to this axis, right? So if I take this uh, back layered uh, cube that I was talking about, if I determine the moment of inertia of only this one, I can say that the moment of inertia of all the other cubes about this axis is going to remain same. So I can write six times the moment of inertia of this back layered cube, right? So what I'm left with is you can say that this moment of inertia of the back cube about this particular axis is again using the formula is going to be KML square, right? So this is actually passing from the center of mass. So I can write it as ICM, that is KML square. What I'm left with is determining the perpendicular distance between these two axes, right? So that is work of some 3D. And I want to visualize in which planes these two parallel lines will lie, right? So let me make a line on the top of this cube, right? On the top of this cube, I'm making this face diagonal. And what if I put a knife along this red line and slide it down vertically downward? I will be cutting a plane, right? 
So the plane I'm talking about is this plane, right? If you can follow, this red plane is what I'm talking about. And if you can visualize, these two lines will lie on this particular plane, right? So of this plane, I want you to imagine a triangle, this triangle, right? Its hypotenuse is going to be equal to body diagonal. Its height is going to be equal to this much. And its base is going to be equal to the face diagonal of the base. Face diagonal of the base, right? So this is the triangle I am talking about. This total length is going to be 2L. Of course, this length is L. This length is also L. And since these base lengths are face diagonals, these are going to be root 2L root 2L, right? Again, this length is also L. And from here, you can say that these two lines are similar, right? I did not use any arguments as of now to prove that these two lines are actually parallel. But here you can see that these two lines are parallel because you can see that this triangle and this triangle are similar triangles. Height by base is equal to height by smaller triangle of uh, base by smaller base of a smaller triangle right so these two are parallel let's say this angle is angle alpha what i have to determine is perpendicular distance between these two lines so let me draw up a perpendicular from this point on this particular line if this angle is alpha this angle will also become alpha and this is the distance i want to determine let me call that distance d so from here, we can see that a small d is equal to capital L cos alpha, right? So, uh, in this right angle triangle, you can see this uh, height base. So, of course, this hypotenuse, that is, of course, the body diagonal of small q. So, that is going to be root 3L. From here, we can write the value of cos alpha as base by hypotenuse, that is root 2 by root 3. So, this will become root 2L by root 3 and we will put this result as in this uh, equation m times d square that will become 2l square by 3 right now what we are left with 2 plus 6 8 ml square gets cancelled away right so 32k minus 8k will become 24k equal to uh, 6 into 2 12 by 3 4 4 so k value is coming out to be 1 by 6. So this is the answer. And also one more result that I uh, said that will have a bearing uh, with respect to the previous case that we did. Uh, in case of I square, I told you that you can take any axis that is passing through the center of mass and in the plane of this square and the moment of inertia is going to be same 1 by 12 mr square. We have the similar kind of result in this case also, in the case of cube also. You can take any axis that is passing through the center of mass and there is no condition on being in the plane or something like that because this uh, cube is of course a case of three dimension so you can take any axis that is passing through the center of this cube and the moment of inertia is going to remain same 1 by 6 ml square right so maybe you should give it a thought thank you and if you like this video please share it with your friends uh, 